Hi, I'm Randy Wong. I'm a retina specialist located in Fairfax, Virginia in the United States. This is a video on how I fix a giant retinal tear. A giant retinal tear is a very specific and dangerous type of retinal detachment because they're hard to fix. Many patients end up with very poor vision, such as legal blindness or worse. This is usually due to complications of surgery because these are very difficult to fix despite using conventional methods such as a spoil buckle, intraocular gas, laser, freezing, or even silicone oil. The first thing I have to do is perform a vitrectomy, which, which is to remove most or all of the vitreous causing the retinal detachment. As I remove the vitreous, the retina, in this case, is free to unfold or unravel back to its proper anatomic position. And what I'm doing here is marking each edge of the retina so that I can see it more easily when we reattach the retina. Right now it's just kind of flapping in the wind, if you will. This is the really cool part of the operation. I'm injecting a heavy liquid called perfluoron. Now perfluoron is unique because it's heavier than water. And I'm going to use it as a tool to make the retina unroll and lay back into its proper position. I'm going to slowly inject this heavy liquid to get it ahead or underneath this edge of retina and it's going to slowly push it back to where it's supposed to be. It's this flap or redundancy of the retina in a giant retinal tear that makes these uh, cases so difficult to fix and often leads to so many complications and loss of vision that I spoke about uh, earlier. We're almost done. I'm kind of coaxing it along with that light blue plastic tip. And finally, as you, I hope you can see, that the retina is completely unrolled and back to its proper so-called anatomic position. Now that the retina is reattached, or it's back to where it's supposed to be, the next part of the procedure is to laser the retina in place. And here you can see I'm using a laser wand inside the eye and each little white burn is actually a laser burn and over the next three, four, five, six days the, each burn will adhere the retina to the tissue underneath. This is key to keeping the retina reattached. If I don't go completely around the entire tear, then a redetachment can occur. And just before the end of the operation, I'm going to kind of top off the uh, eye, if you will, adding just a little bit more perfluoron. Two weeks later, we return to the operating room to remove the perfluoron liquid. Here you can see these small balls of perfluoron are actually in the anterior chamber or in front of the intraocular lens. They aspirate quite easily. Next I'll go to the back of the eye into the vitreous and slowly remove the perfluoron liquid. If you look at the retina, it's scarred nicely into place and there's no detachment or no level fold. As you look carefully, the amount or the volume of the fluoride liquid is slowly being reduced as I'm slowly aspirating the heavy water in the back of the eye. And after a few moments, we're down to just the last little bit. I'm going to shake the eye in just a second to get any small particles of the perfluoron fall back on the retinal surface so I can aspirate it or remove it, or, uh, and remove it. And as I look at the retina, everything stays attached, and hopefully we're done. As always, I'd like to thank my incredible staff, for without them I'd be nothing. We'll see you again soon. Many thanks for watching.